Hey everyone, this is Michael here from Johnny Appleseed Organic and I am here with Joshua Anderson, our farm manager. And we are here in a place that we've actually never taken you before. This is our olive grove. We are transforming this previously inorganic grove into one that is organic, it's sustainable. We're um, bringing over a lot of those practices that we are implementing at the farm to this space. And so I'm here with Josh and he's going to teach us about one of the aspects of that transformation. We're going to start off with a topic that I deeply love and that's pruning trees. This is a good way to um, give the tree a boost of life, make the tree young again. These are young trees, but they have more wood than leaf and I want more leaf than wood. Mm. That, get, that makes a, a, a more productive tree. The way I'm going to prune this tree, most people might be a little bit afraid of. But one, it's an olive tree, so it can handle a cut. I, I know for a fact olive trees can handle a cut and two a lot of these trees aren't stable if if you were to look down this line there's a lot of there's quite a few trees are leaning over so we have to lighten the canopy of the of the tree so the root system can match the the canopy so I'll start off with my tools and this is a, a handy dandy spray bottle I think this one's actually like a like for like a salon <laughs> it's full of rubbing alcohol it's a sterilizer you always want to sterilize your tools these are my hand clippers these are uh, a Fiskars titanium I guess um, it's a it's a nice pair of hand clippers they do the job another really nice brand is a uh, Felco I really like Felco's and then I'm looking at getting a pair of uh, Castellari's which are like the Ferrari of hand clippers some people use loppers. I'm not overly fond of loppers because I don't think they make as clean of a cut as a handsaw. This is um, probably one of the better handsaws I've ever used. It's a still or steel. I don't know, it's different people pronounce it different ways. Uh, really, really nice. Really fits in your hand well, cuts really well. Silky makes incredible saws. Really expensive, but they're incredible. Why do you prefer saws over hand loppers? Over loppers. Uh, the loppers, I think they make a, a dirtier cut and you can't necessarily get in the angles that you want to. Mm. Now I do want to mention this isn't ideal conditions uh, for pruning a tree because the tree is still wet. It's quite dewy out this morning. Diseases and fungi, uh, fungal problems are transferred through water droplets. So I prefer to wait till the tree is completely dry. But we're gonna, we're gonna go for it anyways. Start off by sterilizing your tool. I'll actually put it back in upside down so my blade isn't going back into the holster. I'll sterilize inside. All right, so you want to take your hand clippers and one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to look at the shape of the tree. Now every tree is a unique individual. So it, you're not going to sit here and try and prune every tree exactly the same. You're going to work with the shape and form that the tree has already expressed. So this tree has essentially a crotch right here and then two scaffolding branches. One scaffolding branch there and one scaffolding branch there. A scaffolding branch is a branch that can bear the load of not only the canopy, but also the fruit set. Olives, when they fruit, they actually, they'll get so heavy that branches will break. So you have to have strong branches on the tree to handle the, the weight of the fruit. Then also a crucial fact about olives is they own, they fruit on one year old growth. So you have to prune a tree in mind that uh, you wanna leave some some one year old growth for the, for the following season's fruit. So we're gonna get in there and we're gonna open up the center of the tree. We're gonna try and splay the tree out. And you're trying to splay the tree out because that increases the amount of uh, sunlight that's getting into the canopy of the tree and then it's also helping the tree to dry out like i mentioned before if these trees stay wet 
it's not very good for the tree, especially because uh, olives are a Mediterranean tree. They're not from Georgia. They don't necessarily like the, the humidity. So we're trying to make it so they dry out a little bit faster so they will grow in our situation here. Clean that up. And this style of pruning or this shape that we're going for, it's referred to as a vase shape. So um, there's several different techniques for pruning olives. There's the central leader methodology, which was previously used here, but the, I find that methodology, um, it makes the tree too top heavy in our soils. So they tend to want to fall over. I, I like the vase shaping because it, it increases the, the, light penetration into the canopy and then it also increases the stability of the tree and that's more or less that's more or less we have our vase shape right here you have your two scaffolding branches right here and you're going for, uh, for anywhere from three to or i should say two to six scaffolding branches depending on the how the tree presents itself this one could become a scaffolding branch at another point in time so that's why I left it. I want to take this guy off. And anything growing in towards that vase, you want to take off because that's on. That's just going to cause a problem in the future. So we have our we have our central V. Light can get through. Wind can get through. That'll help with the tree drying off. It'll help with the tree uh, getting full light penetration. So every leaf has the ability to photosynthesize, which will increase production. And then in this case, we'll also stabilize the tree. So from here, the tree is gonna take a, uh, a new path. Previously, it was, uh, it was staked and it wasn't really able to, to move the way it should. I'm taking the stake out. I'm giving the tree a little bit of breathing room and the tree is gonna grow a little bit bushier and it's gonna grow like this. It's gonna grow out as opposed to growing straight up. Something I should mention is there's a huge difference in the way that you look at a tree for fruit production and then the way that you look at a tree for uh, landscape. So a lot of these, um, a lot of landscapers, they want a, a central leader, which would be a, just one single branch that makes the tree tall. Fruit production is entirely different. The taller your tree is, the harder your, the harder of a time you're going to have picking your fruit. So you want to have compact short trees that help you to um, pick and manage the tree as it's growing and now now this tree is going to be just a big bush and every year we're going to come through and we're going to clean out that central vase for uh for both fruit production and airflow and light penetration into the canopy Thank you so much for joining us here as we transform this olive grove from a conventional olive grove to a climate farmed olive grove. If you like what you saw, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank you so much.